Hi, I'm Nicola from Lab Life, and in this video, I'm going to talk you through the BMS 146 FLARQ LED Trinocular Microscope. Um, so, the title of this product is super complicated, but that's the only negative thing I'm going to say about this uh, microscope because I do, in fact, really, really like it. So, if you're looking for a microscope that's suitable for A level biology, this one definitely ticks all the boxes. Price wise, it's not too cheap, it's not too expensive, it's kind of in the middle um, and it does come with a free five year warranty so you can expect a nice long lifetime from it in your lab. In terms of power, you can plug it into the mains like I have done here or you can power it with batteries. If you're using rechargeable batteries, you can power it straight from them and then when you plug the unit in, it's going to charge your batteries back up for you. If you're using normal batteries, please make sure at that point to never plug it into the mains um, because you're going to blow the batteries and it's going to make a mess and we don't want that. Okay, so to turn the microscope on, there's a flick switch at the back. I'm just going to turn it on. And now you can see that my light source is illuminated. So this is an LED light source, which is important for three reasons. It's not going to get hot, so when your student brushes their arm against it, it's not going to hurt them. Um, and it's also more energy efficient, and you're going to get a longer bulb life um, than you would a tungsten bulb. You can change the brightness of this bulb by playing with this wheel here, decrease and increase. Um, and then if we come to the top of the microscope, you can see this is trinocular. Um, so we've got this tube up here, which is where you'd uh, attach your camera if you wanted to. And then we've got two more oculus here, which you can rotate. So this is to make it match the spacing between your eyes. So if I look down here and then get one field of view, one perfect circle. And then this is gonna stop me from Getting, there we go. Stop me from getting a headache when I'm using the microscope, which is a bit brighter. Um, in these two oculars, we've got two 10 times eyepieces. Um, and then if we come down the microscope to this quadruple nose piece, we have got three different objectives on here. They're all uh, achromatic. So this red one is four times, the yellow one is 10 times, the blue one is 40 times. Um, and then you can see we've got a spare space here. Now you can get more objective lenses for this model. You can get 60 times and you can get 100 times. The 100 times one is the one that you'd use with an oil immersion. Um, and then if we come down even further, we have got the coarse and fine focus here on a rack and pinion movement. The coarse focus is the one that's closest to the microscope and the fine one is the one that's uh, on the outer side. Um, Oh, one feature to point out is that it's got a rack stop on there. So what this does is it sets the maximum height of the stage so that it doesn't touch your objective lenses. So if you didn't have this feature on your microscope, you'd essentially be able to move your stage right up into your, right up in, right up into your objective lens and essentially it would smash your slide, ruin your sample, send glass flying everywhere. Um, not ideal, so this is a really good safety feature of this microscope. Um, then we've got the micrometer stage here. So this is an XY translational stage. We've got these screws here again on rack and pinion. So the top one moves your stage in the Y direction, forwards and backwards. Um, and the bottom one moves it um, in the X direction, side to side. Uh, you've got vernier scales on both the X and Y, so you can make nice precise measurements on both axes. And then we've got the stage clip here. So that's gonna secure your slide in place nice and securely. And then underneath, we've got an Abbey type condenser and the diaphragm with this little lever here. So that is all the parts of the microscope covered. So if we want to start thinking about focusing in on a sample, I'll show you how to do that. So you get your microscope slide, you open the clip, plonk your slide in here and secure it. So starting on the lowest magnification and making sure your stage is all the way up. We want to look through the eyepieces um, and then use the coarse focus um, to get it uh, at the right height so we can see it clearly. So I'm going to use the coarse focus, roll it towards me and bring the stage down until I can see some structure. And then I'm going to use the fine knob just to get it nice and sharp. And once it's in focus, we turn this to the next um, magnification. Look down again, so this is pretty much bang in focus already. I'll just twizzle the fine knob ever so slightly. 
there we are and then up to the next magnification now that looks super close but i assure you there is a teeny tiny gap and then again use the fine focus to get it nice and clear and there we are all in focus so it's really nice that you've got the um both the oculus here and this extra one up here so that um, you can have a camera attached to it because I always find it easier to be able to focus using the eyepieces first um, and then find it with the camera. If you only had the one like monocular, for example, you'd have to do it with your eye first and then attach your camera. And if it gets out of focus, you'd have to take your camera off and it's a right palaver. So it's really nice that you've got both of those options um, at the same time. Um, so yes, I hope this video has been useful. We've talked through all the different features of the microscope and how to get focused on the slide. Um, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.